Hello, everybody, and welcome to Sarah Griffith Presents Rough Stuff. This is my show now. It's just me. Uh, we bring, normally, we bring comedians and writers on, and our pals to talk about their adolescence and embarrassing stories, blah, 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 blah. But today, I host of Rough Stuff, only host of Rough st- Stuff. <laughs> I'm so thrilled, <laughs> so giddy, so, so chuffed to present <laughs> today's guest, which you may know her from Cracked, from the Small Beans Network, and the one time she was on a game show called Mastermind. <laughs> Fast and Furious fan, Bridget Greenberg. Hi. Hey, this is a very nice cage you've locked, man. Thanks for this bowl of water and uh yes. and pea corner that you've given me. Um, is it warm where you are? Is it a little are you a little bit uh sweaty? I'm gonna be honest, you blindfolded me, put me in a van, so I don't really know where I am, but it's pretty uh temperate. You've given me nice quarters. Well, you know, I do my best. Um yeah. Bridget, you're not alone though. No, no, I'm not. <laughs> I realize now this analogy got this this bit got weird. Because uh, Bit got weird. Yeah. I took your blindfolds off and surprise, you're with your parents. M- mom and dad are here. Dear old mom and dad. We've talked about them. A do you want to give them a proper intro? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> they're, they're wonderful people. I love them so much. They've, uh, they've, they've given me life and, uh, and uh, you know, all, all the knowledge I have, and hopefully they're going to be as nice to me as I just was to them, because you're going to be interviewing uh, Missy and David Greenberg, who are right here with me. Yes, I am. And I'm yeah. grinning from ear to ear. You can't see it if you're listening, but I am. Just know that. Um, I will say, Sarah came up with this idea, and I said no, and then I laughed really hard. And I was like, damn, that's too good to say no to. Yeah, because I mean, yes. I fought it. I fought it a lot, but it it was a good idea. And um, you're not going to hear much from me in this episode because Yeah, due due to our last minute, let's do this plan, um, we're technically a little underprepared today, so Bridget will not be able to hear or speak on her behalf or defense. It's pretty much open season on BG. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, Yes, it is. And... uh, (laughs) Honestly, I I got over a lot of like the nerves about this podcast originally, and it's right back to the beginning again. Wow, with my like level of nervousness uh, well, about what's gonna happen. Before we bring them on, I mean, any last words that you'd like to dignify yourself with before we know the real you? I mean, would you like to say anything to our fans? Any message you'd like to, you know, give to the members of the Small Beans Network before you? unfortunately pass away from embarrassment i'm sure <laughs> seconds from now yeah no this is uh it's been a great run uh and uh thank you all for coming aboard i will be leaving forever now and uh my parents will be taking my hosting duties okay from me forever great glad to hear it Maybe. i think with that we'll see how they do well i say without further ado missy and david get in here get in here welcome David and Missy Greenberg to Rough Stuff. How are y'all? We are good. Relaxing up here in Vermont with the family. Thank you for having us. Uh, thank you for being on. Is this come true? Is this your first podcast experience? Have you been a guest on any other show? We're boomers. This is our first. <laughs> We're virgins. <laughs> <laughs> well... It's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to be talking about a subject that you know a lot about. Of course, your your only daughter, um, your favorite child. Uh, can we say that? Maybe not. Uh, we're going to be talking about we're 50, Bridget. Fifty pairs. <laughs> Are we counting the dog? <laughs> That's oh, true. okay. Well, in that case, <laughs> so. Bridget, Bridget, Bridget has come on this show and every single episode she's like, I was really cool and popular in high school and nothing was ever embarrassing for me. I was always the star of every production. How how would you describe Bridget middle school, high school years? 
middle school, high school years. There was an awkward Bridget who <laughs> would only wear her ponytail down low because she couldn't do it up high and would not let me teach her how to do it high. And for a girl who spent half her time on the basketball court, she looked like a 60s hippie who was wearing his ponytail low. <laughs> Okay, I sympathize with that one, though, because that was also very much me. Oh, David, what what was your, like, if you could, like, three words to describe your teenage daughter? When she was a teenager? Yes. Oh, she was a witch. (laughs) Did she give you a lot of trouble? No, she was just very, um... I think when she turned 14 till about 18, she was just very mean. (laughs) Was she mean to you or was she mean to everybody? Primarily me. (laughs) I took the brunt of her meanness. She just wanted people to think that she just came to be and she didn't have parents. Oh, okay. Now, would you say maybe were you embarrassing parents or was that just Bridget being mean? You want to answer that? <laughs> yeah, I think me being a teacher at her public school at a private school had a level of embarrassment except sure. when it was cool and like Shaquille O'Neal came into the classroom and then Whoa. it was cool if Matt Damon was in the office <laughs> then I was cool but besides that a complete embarrassment I think. <laughs> wow, I didn't realize that um there were such stars going in and out of that high school. Oh, yeah. Rich and the famous. (laughs) Wow. And um, we have talked a lot about Bridget's hoops, her hoop dreams on the basketball team. She describes her position as bench warmer a few times. I'm not sure where on the court that I'm not. Basketball isn't my for it. Was she was she a bench warmer or do you remember her being more of a star? Because I think she's downplaying her basketball abilities. Middle school, a star. We don't know why. High point of the game was like her high, her high score was one. And she broke her finger doing that. Middle school, left bunch warmer and water, ball, water bottle catcher. Okay. Those were her two positions. She sh- she's, a li- she's shorting herself a little. She was referred to as the left guard. She sat to the left side of the bench and guarded the water bottle. <laughs> okay, that's pr- I would play probably right on that position as well. That sounds exactly like where I would be. Now, so you've had the perspective of watching like Bridget be a teen and adolescent kind of go through that. Now, you two were that age as well. Would you say that you shared similar awkwardness or were you two just like always cool, always kick ass and Bridget's a loser? <laughs> Bridget, a loser? Never. <laughs> <laughs> you want to take this one, huh? Mm, I, I don't know. I was more, she's more confident than I could ever be. And, but we both like to be outside all the time. So that was a similarity. My brother and her brother, best friends, always looked up to them, tried to be like them. But, and there was definitely no Barbies in her house or my house. So those were the similarities. Mm. (laughs) I didn't play with Barbies either. Okay. (laughs) Okay. Wow. And and now it wouldn't be fair if we brought you two on rough stuff and we didn't maybe explore some of your embarrassing moments. I mean, when you think on those moments that make you cringe, maybe not even as an adolescent, but in your lifetime, do you two have any stories that when you think of you're like, oh my gosh, that was such a foot in the mouth moment or whatever it could be? I think I have maybe too many to cover in just an hour (laughs) show. (laughs) If we're talking about foot in the mouth moments. You want to cover it? I remember one when I used to take a lot of dance classes. And all of a sudden, I got ready for dance class one day. And I was putting my foot up on the bar. And everyone's like, you don't have your underwear on. (gasps) Never forget (laughs) that one. I never heard that one. (laughs) Yeah. It was like one of those dreams that keeps repeating on you. But yeah, that was me. (laughs) 
go down. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Mine probably just from misspeaking or I'll never forget after one of the hurricanes, it was in 1992 after Hurricane Andrew and our neighborhood didn't have power and the people who lived across the street from us, the wife was pregnant and we're outside walking after the storm and I see what I think was her walking towards me and I say, oh, looks like it's any day now. And as they got a little closer, I realized it wasn't the pregnant woman but it was her sister-in-law. <gasps> oh. <gasps> oh, no. Oh, no. Wait, that is really bad. <laughs> yeah, that was really, yeah, that was really an embarrassing moment. Or, or actually, the other night when we were up here in Vermont, it was really a very um, funny story. We ordered a, I ordered a hamburger, and the, <laughs> I ordered medium rare, and the, it was really well, it was very overcooked. Mm. So I called the waitress over or she asked me how my burger was. I said, well, it's really well done. And her answer was, oh, thank you. <gasps> no. <laughs> oh, oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. No. <laughs> Wow, I feel bad for all of the women in these stories that you just told. Oh man, that's, those are good stories though. That's that's a good. You two have th these are awesome. This is great. I this is this is going to be the show from here on out. I think Bridget is out now, and it's just me. It's Missy. It's David. This is bye this bye is the Bridget. new rough stuff. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. <laughs> she's she's being kicked. She's being fired. I'll tell her. I'll just send her an email. She doesn't have to hear this, you know, right now. I mean, that'd be embarrassing in front of her parents, you know. So it's we'll talk. We'll talk. We'll talk. Now, are you it's the two only job she has right now? <laughs> she needs it. <laughs> well, hey, we have the other podcast. I was going to ask if you two are Fast and Furious fans, like Bridget is. I never got past one. I never. <laughs> okay. uh, but but after hearing the, um, I'm sorry, what's the podcast called? It's, it's called The no, Cast no, it's and the Curious. Cast and the Curious. <laughs> I, I am going to have to go back and start rewatching the rest of them. They're pretty, hey, with the time you have with Bridget, have her just like walk you through, just bang them out in like a single day. <laughs> just zoom right through them. <laughs> We're looking forward to that. <laughs> Um, now, we did call some questions from the audience because we went ahead and went on Twitter and we said this was going to be a very Bridget-centric episode. So people submitted questions that they thought I was going to ask Bridget. No, I'm asking you, you two, on her behalf, <laughs> some of these questions. Um, so one of the questions we received is... Um, what are some embarrassing stories or moments from your bat mitzvah? Do you two remember maybe an awkward moment during that time? The <laughs> night before my bat mitzvah, I convinced my mom that I wanted to hang out with my friends and I'd be home by nine o'clock. Well, we all met and we were playing around and I was running down the hill and I fell into my <gasps> friend's head and my tooth was hanging out of my mouth for my bas mitzvah. I wasn't allowed to eat, <gasps> and my whole mouth was black and blue. I remember oh, that. <laughs> my God, that's so terrible. Were you like in a lot of pain, or was it more the pain? Oh of yeah, humiliation? but I couldn't. My mother was so mad at me. I just had a. Oh yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely. You were gonna up. have to. Oh my, did oh, that yeah. affect your speech at all? Like you have to speak. I'm sure it did, but. But I didn't have a good voice to begin with, so it could have been an improvement. <laughs> wow. Do you have a lot of photos from that day that you have to look back on? No. Or? No. Thank you. <laughs> Because I think that is like... And Dave, what about you with the big hair, the Elvis hair? Well, at the time, I didn't really notice. But looking back on him, the Jew fro did, um, <laughs> was pretty, pretty dominant. <laughs> Well, your Jufro is coming in beautifully right now. I mean, I think the the pandemic has done wonders. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, okay, so the audience also wants to know about Bridget's dancing or lack of dancing ability. She's talked on the show before about how she's a miserable dancer, so she would break dance. Did you two see any break dancing? What were your thoughts on that? <laughs> You got to take this one. <laughs> <laughs> it, 
It was her version of I can't do because she wouldn't go to dance school. Mm -hmm. So and all her friends were in dance teams and dance clubs. And it was at bar mitzvah age when everybody was like, you know, they would get in the center and their song would come on and they do their routine. And she couldn't and didn't. So she's like, I'll turn it around and I'll do the worm across the floor <laughs> or spin across the floor. <laughs> And she had the one big move at the end where she tried to pop up. You didn't try. <laughs> you did try. I did it. Yeah, on you, but it was on your face. Yeah. I can hear, I can. I, I think I can hear Bridget screaming from the inside of her cage. Is that rattling that I'm hearing and gnawing? <laughs> A little bit of rattling and she's trying to gnaw at the bars right now. <laughs> she's like frantically pacing back and forth. <laughs> ah so um another another thing that we talk about a lot on the show is like bridget grew up being funny i grew up being funny and with being funny sometimes you wind up accidentally being mean a lot um when when did you first start to see in bridget like no she's actually not just like mean and snappy she's actually really funny and we could maybe make some money off of this humor that she has <laughs> I remember when she was about two and a half years old, it, she was always quiet up in, until then and watching her older brother and older brother. And we were up in visiting Missy's parents. And just out of nowhere, it, the Bridget Greenberg show started and never ended from there. <laughs> but, she, but she always had a really good um, sense of comic timing. She knew how to deliver the joke, which was... Um, much appreciated because people say I don't know how to do it which I think is completely wrong but um, one of the favorite stories with her or, or that you saw how funny she was we were my father wore a hearing aid and uh, we're at a Passover dinner with maybe 15 20 people around the table and my mother always put out a very elegant table and in this case it had um, some sort of nuts spread all over, cashew nuts spread all over the table. And Bridget looks at my father and sees the hearing aid in his ear and picks up one of the cashews and just places it in her ear and doesn't say anything. She's just like looking at, looking, waiting for someone to notice and then <laughs> looking over at my father to um, make the reference that, hey, she's copying what he's doing or, yeah. or hey, he had it. So... She always had a very good timing with it and knew how to um, how to, to deliver the joke properly. That's sweet. That's very funny. Right. That is a good bit. <laughs> right. Until no one notices and then she's got a nut in her ear all night. <laughs> exactly. Right. <laughs> what if no one noticed? Would she have slept with it? See, she would have. <laughs> she would have probably wanted to make sure the joke went off. And she went to giving up on it. So it might right. have stayed in her ear for a week if no yeah. one else noticed. I have inflicted injury on myself because of bit commitment. Just It's like I have to keep doing this until somebody laughs or I get hurt. See, with me, she was more like the Lucy Ball type of co comedy. Because <laughs> everything with me involved her falling down and hurting herself. <laughs> when she was little, there was this fountain. I'm sure she talked about it by the Dairy Queen. Yes. And she and her two best friends had to go up and walk around the fountain. And I turned to mothers and I said, 10 to 1, my daughter's going to be the one that ends up in the fountain. Yup. <laughs> she was the one soaking wet. Or the time we had to walk around the house because we were having work done and the workmen had left the back doors open and they had come home from school and they had their backpacks and we start walking around the back and we're walking and all of a sudden Josh and I hear splash into no. the pool, fully closed, backpack and all. Oh no. Oh, getting paper wet is so hard. <laughs> right. Exactly. No, it was always her falling down that... uh that got us should we laugh or should we cry because she'd get up and tell us i'm all right i'm okay i'm fine with tears running down her face yes yeah lest she be humiliated by her own injuries klutziness yes <laughs> yes 
Now, David, we actually talked about you in another episode a while back, which genuinely prompted this audience question. The audience wants to know, Bridget, how is your farting father doing? (laughs) (laughs) Well, it really wasn't all my fault. I I blame it on my wife um, because she made brisket and then sent me off to this adult karate class. So the brisket and and myself just don't mix very well. Um, And I guess she started telling you about that. I went into um, a karate class and at this point in time, it was me and one other person who is in the, are in the middle, standing in the middle of the class and are supposed to fight. And when I went to kick, (laughs) there was a little propellant that came out. I, I don't remember if I won the fight or not, but it went, but no, you didn't. I'm telling you, yeah, I wasn't there, but you didn't. I'm just letting you know. Okay. Right. So then the, the funny part is obviously I was too embarrassed to ever go back or by, by that point, take Bridget back for her karate class. And it was maybe about two months or three months later that she turned to me and, go, and asked, why don't we go to karate class any longer? <laughs> <laughs> that I finally had to, um, well, I had finally had to um, come clean, being I was wearing clean shorts at the time, that I finally had to come clean with the truth about why she is not a karate champion and a black belt at this point in her life. <laughs> I have to say, I really like the fact that he threw Missy right under the bus at the top of that. Hey, it's not my fault that she was making good food. <laughs> <laughs> but she knows the, the power uh, the brisket has on that. <laughs> It was a setup. She set you up. A hundred percent. Woo. All right. Well, we've had a lot of fun just roasting Bridget, but let's maybe end on something nice. Well, what was a moment in Bridget's adolescence that small or large truly made you proud of your daughter? Oh, she makes me proud every day. But I got to say, when she was at her brother's bar mitzvah, so she was 10, he was 13, it was in a basketball court. And they introduced the family. And she decides she's going to come in dribbling a basketball. But that wasn't good enough. She was going to make a layup, and it was going to go in. (laughs) And that ball must have rolled around that basket 10 times. And I swear, everybody there was praying that it went in. And when it dropped, and the look on her face was, like, incredible. That's a great (laughs) memory. Yeah. All right, David, do you have anything? Or are you going to blame Bridget for farting, too? Is that... Um... <laughs> no, no, it, no, it's completely Missy's fault, and Bridget had nothing to do with it. <laughs> I, I really... I can't pick a particular moment, but I always said if I came home and the house was burnt down and Bridget was holding the book of matches, the only thing I could say to her was, good job. <laughs> Well, that's beautiful. That is just beautiful. All righty. Well, I think we're going to let Bridget out of the cage again. Thank you to so much. So, so, so much. And on behalf, not just me, but on behalf of everybody who's listening to this right now, thank you for making this our best episode yet. <laughs> thank you for having us. Bye. Well, Bridget, um, I hope that that wasn't painful. That wasn't that bad. It, it's, I mean, again, they had the headphones connected to you. I could not hear you at all. So it seemed cute. Oh, right. You don't know what I was saying. I was talking shit about you. Like, definitely. Like, don't be surprised yeah. when you hear uh, it. Like, for sure I was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I wouldn't be surprised. But uh, no, they, I don't know. That's kind of what I expected. They're very nice people. And they love me very much. So I, I they had great they stories. Were- they truly were. I truly these this is our this is our best episode. These are our best guests. <laughs> um, I was listening to it and I was like, how does every single one of our stories revolve around Judaism? <laughs> <laughs> there was not one that did not take place at, <laughs> during some sort of Jewish holiday. Okay, out of fairness, one of the questions was from the audience, which was specifically about mitzvahs. So right. I will say one was a setup, but the rest. <laughs> 
<laughs> that was organic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Literally just like that. <laughs> no, I, I realized oh, they were man. talking and I was like, Passover? Yes, Ooh. Seder? Yeah, just everything. God, was. and I wanted to laugh so hard, but I was like, I don't want to laugh over what they're saying. Like, I, I don't want to be impolite because I know you can only, like, I mean, it's just hard to hear two people talk at the same time. But Jesus, this is an episode I'm actually going to listen to beginning mm. to end once it's up. I guess I'm gonna have to. A... <laughs> oh my god, that's right. You like have I have to no idea what's gonna to. happen. Yeah, I have no idea uh, what happened. Hopefully, um, hopefully it was good. I don't know. <laughs> I just want to say when we when the FaceTime got back to you, you visibly look stressed. Like you visibly <laughs> look sweaty. I yeah no I I was a little sweaty. <laughs> <laughs> Well, during, thanks for letting us whole... do this to you and your yeah. family. <laughs> were, were you surprised? <laughs> by any... I, you know, I was just I was surprised by the stories we heard of them. Yeah, I feel like I know your parents on on a level now that I didn't before. Yeah, you guys are better <laughs> friends than we are now. <laughs> well, we're certainly bonded forever. All right, uh, can I get out of this cage now? Yes, um, I guess. Do, do your parents have any social media? <laughs> You can add Missy and David Greenberg on Facebook. Uh. Yeah, exactly. You can get some memes from them on Facebook. Um. Um, but other than that, you know, it's at, you already know, it's at Rough Stuff Pod, baby. That's across all social yeah, platforms. Yeah, if, if, um, if you're not following, get out. Get, get out. out. This isn't for you. You don't, you don't get to listen to this episode and also not follow us. And also rate, review, and subscribe on Please. iTunes. And also yes. listen to the cast and the curious. Listen to our other show. Yeah, Why we not? got we got more content. We got content on content. You, you got you got something better going on. Uh, we don't. We're watching <laughs> fast. <laughs> We're watching fast movies, which is a good use of time. It is a great use of time. Well, right. well, this we, was fun. Yeah, to we I think. Uh, do this now. I will say the caveat here on this episode. Mm-hmm. In a desperate attempt to get Bridget to go along with this <laughs> idea, I said, "If you do it, I'll do it." So, um, yeah, so I guess on deck, Lanny on, and Debbie Griffith. On deck are the Griffiths. Uh, I imagine there'll be a lot more cursing. Uh, yeah, joke's on you. My dad actually was a radio broadcaster for like 15 years. I know, years, no, so. and they, yeah, <laughs> there'll be better mic discipline. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but there's going to be a lot of soundboards like, <laughs> yeah. beep, 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 like, you know, fine. <laughs> yeah. Radio broadcaster Lanny Griffin. Yeah, there's, uh, we're gonna have. It's gonna be my parents, and then also a, a little trip from Dan the Man Plumber or whatever the fuck. <laughs> He's gonna give us a weather report. It's gonna become full morning FM talk. Can't wait. <laughs> Alrighty, I already said to follow us online. Yeah, stay so tuned, everyone. Yep. Stay tuned. Buckle up, and if you have good parents, tell them you love them. Yeah, call your parents. Call your parents. All right, bye. Bye.